Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. Thank you, Lord. I want to um, pray a prayer today, and I want everybody to pray it with me. Probably never heard this prayer before. It's in the Bible, but uh, I think you can handle it because we're going to put it up on the screen so you can read it. Okay, you ready? All right, it's found in Matthew chapter 6, and it says this. Everybody pray this with me. Our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth, as in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Listen, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Say that again. Deliver us from evil. Say it again. Deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Hallelujah. That's a great prayer. Listen, I want to talk to you a little bit about this today. And it's kind of a strange situation because I actually had another message all planned. And I was praying uh, yesterday afternoon and the Lord just began. I started praying this prayer. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand. I don't, just don't pray it that much. But, but as I did, God did something. But before I do that, I got to say something real quick, okay? Everybody's been asking me how Becky's doing. I don't know. I locked her in her room and told her when she gets well, come out. No, that's not true. She's doing great. You know, just the last, uh, this last three or four days, there's just been a significant change, and she's doing great. She's out of pain, and uh, she's doing good. We're just waiting for the doctor to say, okay, you can start doing some things. Uh, she's doing physical therapy, and uh, she's, going, she's doing great. Her back is healed in Jesus' name, and uh, so she's, she'll be back at it here pretty soon, but just so you'll know. Amen? Amen. Now, back to the message. should have said that in the beginning, right? But... Um, I started praying that just, I was actually just walking around. I was just praying it. And I kept, I just kind of kept landing on that deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. You know, we need a deliverer. You know, there's a lot of evil. There, there's a lot going on. And, and the word here, deliver, actually means uh, to rescue. It means to draw to oneself. It means to rescue. It means to deliver. And it goes on to say, deliver us from evil. Now, look, we can, you know, you can classify evil all you, all you want, but the definition here of evil is very simple. Great trouble, annoyance of the devil, physical, mental, or circumstantial trouble. Do you know there is deliverance for you? Listen, we just had an awesome weekend with our Freedom Conference. And, and uh, you say, well, I didn't know anything about it. Well, maybe you'll know next, next time we can get hooked up with it. But, but it was amazing the deliverance that came forth, the things that God delivered people from to bring them where they need to be with God. And, and I guess maybe that's why the Spirit of God wanted to just kind of hook up with that today because we have the right to be delivered from evil. Listen, Jesus would not have given that prayer to us to pray if God wasn't going to answer it. He wants to deliver you from temptation. He wants His will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. He wants to provide for you. 
but he wants you delivered. I, I don't know about you, but I, I, uh, there are seasons of time in my life where there's been great annoyance by the devil. Now, I, I'm not going to give him credit for doing anything but being annoying. Because that's really all he is in our lives. Why? We just sang it. We have authority. Miracles do happen. God does deliver. God is working. And the Bible says that we can pray and we can be delivered from those annoyances of the devil of great trouble, whether it's physical, mental, or circumstantial. Because, you know, you can just get in circumstances sometimes that are just not good. But you can get set free of that. You don't have to live in that. You don't have to live that way. You don't have to accept, listen to me, you do not have to accept an inferior gospel. We can expect that deliverance. And I just tell you right now, listen, you have to make up your mind. You're going to let your faith rise up, and you're going to challenge the circumstances of your life in the name of Jesus, and you're going to declare God's deliverance in your life, and you're going to say, say God, enough is enough. Thank you. You're my deliverer. You deliver me from evil. He is a great deliverer. And he sent his son to seal that in our lives. Listen to what the word of God says in Luke chapter 4 in verse 18. Listen to this. Jesus came into the earth. Now listen. He came into the earth. He opened, as soon as his ministry began, he opened the Bible. Now it's not, it wasn't in verse like it is today, but he opened the Bible in the Old Testament. And he found in Isaiah where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So if any of that is you, does any of that cover you? You have a deliverer. You have someone, listen to me, who is ready to set you free of every annoyance of the devil, every trouble. Well, you know, I'm just like Job. Well, might, you might want to go read the end of Job. Job didn't stay in his trouble. I didn't say you weren't going to be challenged with trouble, but I've got good news for you. There is the deliverer. You don't have to live in it. You don't have to, to live your life and say, well, this is just my lot in life. No, it's not. Jesus said, uh, I came that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. So what do you have to do? You've got to make up your mind you're going to let the deliverer work in your life. Whatever area it may be. Well, I'm fine. Everything's fine in my life. You need deliverance. <laughs> I mean, something's wrong with you. I mean, seriously, everything, oh, everything's fine. Oh, really? Yeah. I think, I think you need deliverance from denial. And that's not the river over in Egypt either. That was actually pretty funny. I don't know whether y'all got that or not. So listen to what it says. It says, Jesus, first of all, came to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, you know, I've heard preachers say all the time, you know, that, well, that means you're going to be rich. Well, that's not true. Listen, you might want to go read all the temptations of the rich. You might not want to be rich. Because there are challenges that the rich have. Amen. No, I, I'll tell you, listen, God wants to bless you. He'll bless your life. He's blessed my life, and I'm happy, you know, with my life. I'm happy with the way I live because God's blessed me. But to be, to, to be honest with you, to be rich, 
I have no desire to be rich. Why? Well, because I like what Dr. Sumrall, one, Dr. Lester Sumrall, one of my mentors, wrote in his Bible. He wrote in his Bible, if I die a rich man, I die a traitor to the cause. Now, that doesn't mean God won't bless you. He'll bless you with, a, you, know, with what you need in your life. He'll bless you over and above. But, but you might want to go read what Jesus talked about, people who were wealthy. And they just said, you know what? I got plenty. I'm going to build a bigger storehouse so I can have more. And all of a sudden, his soul was required. You remember that? You don't want to hear that, do you? Yeah. But God supplies all our needs according to his riches and glory. But what Jesus was talking about here is very simple. He's, listen to this. When he preached the gospel to the poor, he preached that your poverty does not define you with God. You are not defined by how much money you have or don't have. We all have a place at the table. And it is an equal place at the table. Why? Because, listen to me. Because it's good news that that has nothing to do with your relationship with God. I know people that measure, their, that, that, that measure somebody's spirituality by what they have. Because, well, God must really love them if they got a lot. Well, that doesn't mean anything. I know people that live for the devil, that don't even serve God, that have a lot of money. That doesn't mean anything. Listen to me. Money, poverty, being poor, not having enough does not find, define your relationship with God. You can go into the presence of God just as easily as anybody else. It does not define you. And nor is it a marker of spirituality in any way, shape, or form. The gospel just uh, gives you equal access to God, no matter where you are. Now, that doesn't mean God can't lift you up past your financial need and work in your life. He can. But the good news is you can be, de you can be delivered from that, that stigma. I'll never forget the Lord taught me this lesson many years ago. When I, I hadn't been in ministry very long, I was preaching in Mexico, and I was preaching in really all it was is called a brush arbor. They just took some, took, cut some trees down and dug, put, dug holes and put it in the ground and then just covered it, the top of it, with leaves and limbs and, and just to kind of stay out of the sun. And, and, and I was the only one underneath it, and everybody else was sitting out in the sun. Of course, we had them at night, had it at night too. But, but I'll never forget, you know, the peop those people had, had nothing. They did very little. But the pastor wanted to give me an offering. He just wanted to bless me. And, and, and I really didn't want to do it, but, but he insisted. And a lady came up to me, and she had on a necklace, a leather necklace, and, and there was a tooth with a hole drilled in it around on that necklace and she gave me that it was like a donkey's tooth or a horse tooth it was huge tooth so i didn't what am i going to do with a donkey tooth i mean you know i, I don't I, what am i going to do with something like that but here's the thing listen i just i basically took it because i knew i was supposed to take it and I asked the pastor, and he said, oh, that's valuable to her. That's, that's the most, she has nothing, and that, that's one of the most valuable things that she has. So you don't judge value by our standards. You judge value by the, what, what the person has. And she gave, she gave that, and I still have it. I still have it because it's a reminder to me that we don't judge people by what they have or don't have. Jesus, Jesus said, hey, I got good news for you today. I got good news. I'm preaching the gospel to the poor. You have equal access. You have equal access. Second thing that Jesus said here is he said, I came to heal the brokenhearted. 
He's a deliverer. He, Jesus didn't come just to, now I know this sounds terrible when I say it this way. He didn't come just to die for your sins. He came to deliver you. He came to deliver you from the common ailments of the world so that you can challenge those and see him work in your life. And, and, the, and the word of God says very clearly here, listen, listen to what it says. It says that he came to heal the brokenhearted. A brokenhearted person, according to the Greek text here, is someone who is broken down, they're crushed by life, or their body has been shattered and they have no strength. I don't believe God wants us to live that way. I believe God wants us to be full of strength. I believe that it doesn't matter how old you are or what your age is, that God wants to satisfy you with good things. I believe that he wants to strengthen your life or renew your strength like the eagles. And, and you can mount up on wings like the eagles, the Bible says. The, uh, over in Psalm 107, it says God will, will satisfy. The Amplified Bible says your necessity and your desire at your personal age and situation with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles, strong and soaring. You don't have to be weak. You don't have to be broken down. You don't have to be broken down in your mind, in your heart. Well, you don't know what they did to me. It doesn't matter what they did to you. It's what Jesus did for you. He is your deliverer. He can deliver you from brokenheartedness. He can deliver you from that broken down spirit. You don't have to live that way. The word there... um, literally means that he will come and deliver you and and heal you. And the word there, heal, means to cure and to make whole. To cure, to make whole. He is our deliverer. All of these things of life, all these troubles that come uh, because of the devil. You do know it's a devil, right? See, people say, well, but it's my own fault. Listen, I want to tell you, the devil will manipulate you to try to blame you for something he did. Maybe, maybe you did mess up. It doesn't matter with God. Jesus took care of the mess ups. So he came to heal that broken heart. Not only that, I want you to listen to this because this is very important. He said he would preach deliverance to the captives. He would preach deliverance to the captives. That word there, captive, is a very interesting word. It's not used very much in the New Testament, but it's called, the word there is prisoner of war. A prisoner of war. Okay? It's not talking about just being a captive to something or being addicted to something. It means you are bound up and locked up uh, in, in the midst of a war. How many of you know that we're in warfare? Do you know that there are a lot of people that the devil has taken captive? I don't know about that. Well, listen to what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let me read you a couple of verses. Paul is teaching Timothy how to minister. Okay, And he said said this in verse 25. He said, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. Now listen to this next verse because it's important. That they will know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been taken captive by him to do his will. That's a prisoner of war. When the devil can take you captive to where you're not doing what God wants you to do, but you're doing what he, the enemy wants you to do, and you're responding in your life by bitterness and by anger and by jealousy and, 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 and all kinds of, of hatred in your life. Listen to me. You're captive. You say, well, I'm a Christian. No, you're a captive. You've been taken prisoner in your life by the devil. And we've been delivered from the devil. We've been delivered from the enemy. We've been delivered from evil. 
You don't have to live that way. You don't have to live your life that way. Jesus said, I've got good news for you. I'm preaching deliverance to the captives. I am here to deliver you. I'm the deliverer, and deliverance is yours. You don't have to be bound up. I know people that are, that are Christians that live their life in bitterness over something that happened years ago. It still haunts them. It still controls them. Well, you don't know what they did to me. So what somebody else did to you, now listen to me. So what somebody else did to you, now this is important. What someone else did to you is going to make you live a miserable, defeated life. Well, what could have, should have, it doesn't matter. In some cases, maybe you were violated in some way. And so you're going to let somebody else's sin against you control your life. We've got to deliver for that. You do not have to carry those chains in your life. You don't have to be bound up, bound down by that. You can be free of that. If you're still quoting and telling people about something happened to you that was bad 20 years ago, you got a problem. I had something happen to me a number of years ago now, and, and literally I was done wrong. None of you ever been done wrong, I know, but bad wrong. And I caught myself several years later rehearsing how bad that person was because of what they did to me. And you know what I realized? The devil's taking me captive with this. I, I can't live like this. I can't live like this. I've got to forgive it. I've got to walk away from this. I can't live like this. And you know what? It was amazing. Listen to me. It was amazing when I did that. I broke that out of my life. And the, and the gate of that, of that prison swung open and I walked out. Now, it, it, and, and to be honest with you, you say, well, it doesn't affect me in any other area of my life. Oh, yeah, it will affect you. When you're not free in your life, listen to me. When you're not free in your life, it's going to affect your life. I'm, I'm not even going anywhere close to what I want to get to today, but, but this is going to help you. Not only that, Jesus also said that he, there's going to be a recovery of sight to the blind. Now, you know Jesus, he, he opened blind eyes. We know he did. And he probably opened a lot more than what we even read in the, in the New Testament. John said if we had to write it all, we couldn't write it all. But I also believe that Jesus was talking about being able to see spiritually in your life. A restoration of sight, of revelation, of illumination in your life. You know, it's sad today how many people who even come to church and they're just coming out of religion. There's no revelation. There's no illumination. There's no, whoo, I got it. I, I heard that. I got that. I saw that. I see that in the Word of God. I see what the Lord's trying to say. We've got to have that in our lives. Otherwise, you're going to walk around blind, <clears throat> just doing your routine. Blind Bartimaeus had a routine. Every day, he sat in the same spot on the same highway every day until one day Jesus came by. And Jesus opened his eyes. The same thing is true with you if you just get bound up and you're just your little lifestyle and your little world and there's no new revelation, no freshness to what God's saying. Jesus said you can be delivered from that. Amen. You can be delivered from that because I've come to bring sight to the blind and I'll bring that life and that light to you. I like what the blind man said that Jesus healed and he'd been, he'd been blind his whole life. And the Pharisees didn't believe him. And so they were questioning him. You know, and they questioned him once. And they questioned him again. 
<clears throat> and he said, well, there's one thing I know. I was blind, but now I see. Yeah. See, if you can say that, you're, you're moving in the right direction. Why? Because our deliverer sets you free <clears throat> so that you could see, so that you could have your, your, your eyesight. And the last thing that Jesus said I've come to do, he said, I have come, listen to me, I have come to set at liberty those who are bruised. Now that word bruised really doesn't actually bring out the strength of what that word means. It means the oppressed, the crushed, the broken in pieces. You know, one of the greatest things about the good news, the greatest, one of the greatest things about the gospel and, and about sharing the good news with other people is you can look them in the eye and say, I don't care how broken you are, Jesus can mend your life. We have a deliverer, and that deliverer can mend your life. It doesn't matter how much, you can have liberty in your life. You can, hey, did you see the, the testimony of Tammy in the, at the, in the beginning? I, I don't, man, I'm not trying to, uh, to, you know, to embarrass her today. But when she first came to the church, she wouldn't even look at you in the eye. You think she would get up and dance in church and jump around in church? Me? Now, I'll tell you, she's on the front row. Worshiping God. Serves here at the church. Actually works for the church here. Why? Because the Lord does that. He, he loves to do stuff like that. It doesn't matter how oppressed you may be. It doesn't matter how many pieces <coughs> you feel like you're broken into. I've got good news for you. We have a deliverer. And that deliverer will work with you and work for you and to bring deliverance in your life. And anything you're struggling with, listen to me, anything you're struggling with, anything, you can have liberty because we have a deliverer. <clears throat> we have a deliverer. Well, just pray for me. I, I'll be happy to pray for you, but I'll tell you the truth. <clears throat> a lot of times you just need to make up your own mind. We had a lady in our church a number of years ago, and, and uh, I've told this story before, but but she doesn't go here, so I'm not talking about somebody that's here now, but she's gone, she moved. But, but this lady was a, was a school teacher, educated, and, and she just started letting the devil get in her head. And she couldn't keep a job teaching school, and, and she started just kind of being slothful about her life. And, and I'll never forget... I, I don't know how long, but I would see her after every service almost. <clears throat> I saw her heading my way. You know, and her hair wasn't fixed. And, and uh, uh, her, you know, you could tell she hadn't washed her dress she had on. And she'd have, you know, there'd be food on it. I mean, just literally had just lost, just lost it. And see, most people want to say, well, let's just comfort her. Let's just, no, that's not what she needed. And she said, pray for me. And I prayed for her. And I told her one day, I said, you're just going to have to make up your mind. You're going to let Jesus deliver you, and you're not going to live like this because you know how to live. Not because of your past, but because of what the Word of God says. Basically, preach what I'm preaching to you this morning to her. <clears throat> and then I didn't see her for a while. I thought maybe, oh, Lord, I've offended her now. No telling what's going to happen. And, and, and I didn't see her for, for quite a while. And one day, I'm, I, at the end of the service, I see, her, I see this lady walking down. I almost didn't recognize her. Wow. Dressed sharp, hair fixed, smile on her face. And I said, well, look at you. How are you? And she, and she said, I'm doing wonderful. Amen. I said, well, tell me, tell me what happened. She said, you know, I got to thinking about what you said. And I just got tired of living this way. I got tired of living, living on some, something that was a lie. And I realized that God wanted to work in my life. And I'm not quoting her. I'm just telling you kind of because it was a, she had a, she was very verbose. Okay. 
So, so she had talked a lot. So, but basically what she said was, I just got tired of this. I got tired of living like that. And I know Jesus wanted something else for me. And she just started standing on what the Word of God said and believed God. And next thing you know, God had totally delivered her, got her teaching job back and doing great. Sometimes you just got to make up your mind. I'm going to let the deliverer work in my life. I'm not going to just sing the song, miracles happen, miracles happen. You need to be singing the song, miracles happen for me. God's working in me. God's working for me. He's my deliverer. And we never get to the place. Listen, we never get to the place where we think, well, we got it all covered. No, you, listen, you're, you're the worst of the worst if you think that's the case because you're deceived. Because as long as you're in this body, you're going to be challenged. You're going to have the annoyance of the devil. You're going to have trouble. Didn't get any amens out of that either. Did I? I didn't think so. Sometimes financial, sometimes physical. Sometimes circumstantial things just you just got to make up your mind. I'm gonna resist that. That I, if I resist the devil, he will flee from me. If I will seek God and I'll cry out to the deliverer, God will work in my life. Now here's something you need to know about the deliverer. All right, listen to this. He will look past obvious inconsistencies in your life to meet you where you are. Quit saying, well, you know, I got to do better. And if I do better than this, it has nothing to do with that. Right where you are right now in your life, you cry out to God. You let the deliverer work in your life. You let what Jesus did at the cross uh, and the resurrection start working in your life. And you'd be amazed at what can happen. You'd be amazed at what God can do in your life to increase your effectiveness in the kingdom of God. Don't get trapped in the deception that, that Jesus first has to deal with your spiritual problem to meet your needs in your life. I, I, I'm going to tell you, it's interesting because if you go read, most of the time Jesus dealt with the physical problems then dealt with the spiritual problems. Remember the woman caught in adultery? You know, he forgave her and said, hey, don't do this anymore. Every, every, everywhere, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't say, okay, well, how's your, how's your faith life today? Uh, if I'm going to minister to you, he didn't even think about that. He didn't even discuss with Jay Iris, uh, is your daughter uh, living for God? Didn't bother him. He just, went right, he just went right there and ministered to him. Jesus has a capacity to do both. In fact, James wrote about it, and he said this. He said, listen, he said, uh, if you need healing in your body, call for the elders of the church. They're going to anoint you with oil. You'll be healed. And if you forgive, uh, committed any sin, it'll be forgiven. See, when you start calling on the deliverer, he's there. He's there for you right where you are, right where your need is in your life all the time. Romans chapter 11, verse 26 says that the deliverer will come out of Zion. In other words, he came out of Zion. He came out of Israel, and his name was Jesus. But listen to what it says in Isaiah 59. So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. The Redeemer will come to Zion. And those who turn from transgressions in Jacob, says the Lord. Listen, anytime, anytime you're ready, he's ready. Anytime you got an issue, we have the great Holy Spirit living on the inside of us now. You call out to Jesus, the Holy Spirit is there. He was there when Jesus said this. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord's on me. He's anointed me. And that same Holy Spirit lives in you. Right now, he's, in the, he's ready right now to bring that deliverance to you there because that deliverance has already come and it belongs to you. Listen to this, Colossians chapter 1, verse, verse 13. Listen to what it says. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. 
He has delivered us from the power of darkness. When's he going to do it? He's already done it. Well, why am I having so much trouble? Because you're not taking authority over it. You're not letting the deliverer work in your life. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. It's a done deal. Amen. I am delivered. Well, but I got all these problems. Well, you need to start saying, I don't have these problems. I'm delivered from them. Devil, you have no right in my life. You have no authority over me. The deliverer has come out of Zion. And like a, like a flood, the Spirit of God raises up a standard against you. In the name of Jesus. You just make up your mind. That's how you're going to live your life. Whether it's small or large, whether you're captive, whether you need healing in your life, whether you're just having trouble. Too much today. We're just allowing things just to kind of go uh, <clears throat> their own way. Live like everybody else and not realize that in the, in the midst of that, we're being taken captive, that we're living in the darkness we've been delivered from. You don't have to live that way. You don't have to walk in that. <clears throat> Jesus, the Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 8, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. <clears throat> Deliver us from evil. No, I don't have to live that way. Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says, Jesus Listen to this. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. You don't have to live that way. You don't have to live weighed down, pressed in, fretful, worried. You, you don't have to live that life in your ever. Paul was standing before King Agrippa, and he said, let me tell you what Jesus told me. Listen to what Jesus told, told him. He said, I've sent you, in verse 18 of, of Acts chapter 26, I've sent you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among the, all those who are sanctified by Faith in me. You've got, you've got good news. Not only did Jesus become a deliverer, but Jesus said, Paul, I want you to be a deliverer. But you know what? It goes a step further. Over in Mark chapter 16, it says in verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now listen, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. He does not believe will be condemned. Now listen to the next verse. Listen. And these signs will follow those who believe. That sounds like God wants you to be a deliverer. Why? In my name they cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. Now listen. If they take up serpents, it won't, uh, it won't harm them. If they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Sounds like he wants you to be a deliverer. It said, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out to you real quick. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Listen to what it says. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Okay? God, God wants disciples. See, I think sometimes we don't understand what a disciple is. Well, just back up a little bit over to Luke chapter 9 and you'll find out. It says in verse 9, chapter, verse 1, that Jesus called his disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Those were called disciples. Disciples. No, thank God, Jesus became the, listen to me, he became the deliverer, and that authority has been transmitted to us. Not only do we not have to 
permit or put up with things in our life, but we also have the power to help other people. Sometimes I think we get so focused on our problems, we don't realize how powerful we really are. Well, you know, I know the Lord did that for me one time. It's all it takes. Listen, when you get a taste of the delivering power of God, when you get a taste of what God can do, you, you, you're, on, you're on the right track. Listen to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Listen to this. He said, who did deliver us from so great a death, talking about spiritual death, he did deliver us, he does deliver us, in whom we trust he will still deliver us. In other words, God did deliver us. He does deliver us. And oh, by the way, just in case you don't know it, in the future, he'll still deliver you. Why? Because the deliverer has come out of Zion. We have a deliverer in our lives. And you can't let yourself get bound up by that. So let me ask you a question in closing today. What side of the street are you walking on? Really, what, what side of the street are you walking on? Are you just letting the annoyances come and letting the sickness come, letting things happen in your life, and you're not standing against it? You're not declaring the deliverer in your life? You're just saying, well, I'll get past this somehow, some way. You don't have to live like that. No, the deliverer's come. He's come to deliver you, to bring deliverance into your life. Are you live in the freedom of Christ Jesus or bound up by the evil one? You can't be praying, deliver us from evil and not expect deliverance. Jesus came to a woman who was bowed over, bent over, been that way. The Bible says for 18 years, couldn't, couldn't lift herself up, couldn't lift herself up at all, no, nothing she could do. And Jesus looked at the woman and said, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. Now, I understand sometimes it's just not that easy to be loosed overnight from an infirmity, but I want to tell you something. You need to be talking to your infirmities, that you're loosed. No, devil, you're not doing this in my life. No, you're not doing this in my family. No, you're not doing this. No, in Jesus' name. I'm delivered from evil. I know the deliverer, and I say you have, you're not going to do that. Listen to what Jesus said, because they got upset with Jesus, not because he healed the woman, but because he did it on a, on a religious day. So here was Jesus' question to them. Ought not this woman, in verse 16, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, in other words, having an inheritance, a covenant, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. Ought not this woman be delivered? Shouldn't you be delivered? You're a child of God. You're born of God. You're you have the power to be delivered from evil, from annoyance of troubles and circumstances and finances and healing. And you have a right to stand against that and fight that. Why? Because the deliverer has come out of Zion. Our deliverer has come. He's paid the price. And we have the authority. Now, you've got to make up your mind how you're going to live your life. Well, it's just so hard. Wait a minute. You're telling me that you using your faith, standing, declaring, believing, and standing against the devil is harder than just letting him have his way in your life? I want to tell you something. The more you let him have his way, the more trouble you have. It just compounds. Somewhere you got to draw the line and say, I am not putting up with this anymore. It's just like that lady I was telling you about. I'm not putting up with this anymore. Amen. You've got to draw that line in your life. And you've got to make up your mind. I'm going to have liberty in my life. Because yes. Jesus preached liberty to the captives. 
and I'm going to have it, and I'm not putting up with it. See, and let me just, just warn you, the minute you do that, you think, oh, it'll be over tomorrow. It may not, but it'll be over. You just keep standing. Don't give up. Don't give in. Just keep, I mean, if all you can do is pray, deliver us from evil. Deliver me from evil. Deliver me from evil. Thank God I'm delivered from evil. You'd be amazed at what God can do and wants to do. Why? Because the, the deliverer has come. So you've got to fight it. You've got to fight it in your life. Bow your heads with me, would you please? Now, I, I, I'm not going to do this inten intentionally. I, I don't want to specifically just pray for certain needs today. But if you've got, if you're here today, listen. First of all, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, or you've been away from God, you know you need to get back where you need to be. You, you gotta, you gotta get your life where it needs to be. And I'm gonna lead you in a prayer in a minute. <clears throat> but if you're here today, listen, and you say, I need deliverance from evil. And you know what it means. And you're in here today. You got your head bowed and your eyes closed. I want you to lift your hand right now and say, that's me. Lift your hand. Okay. Lift them. You can put them back down. Now listen to me. First of all, your first step is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Second step is that you've got to walk in His ways. Because if you don't, you can be free momentarily but if you don't change your life your lifestyle it won't stand so right now if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life you've been away from God we're going to all pray this prayer together and I want you to pray with me say this with me say Father today I accept Jesus as my Lord as my Savior I thank you that I am delivered from evil that you're my Father and you restore me to life, to live the life you want for me right now. And I thank you. And I boldly declare today that the deliverer has come in my life and I receive deliverance from all my trouble, whether it may be physical, financial, circumstantial, whatever it is, you're my deliverer and you deliver me now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.